Hi, it's Ross here from Wizards Code. What you're looking at here is a game that we've made in around about three hours, give or take a little bit here and there. And I've done a series of videos on this. This is the second to last one. This is showing you what we'll have at the end of the next video. Uh, the complete game that we'll upload to Istio so that you can take a look at it. So what are we going to do in this episode? Well, this is what we're going to have at the end of this episode. The field is um, getting closer to what we were seeing in the final video there. We have the weapons. That's the big difference between this version and the version from the last video. We were using the default weapons that come with the amazing Neo FPS first person controller that we're using here. They didn't really fit the style. So I wanted to inject some different weapons and that's what we're going to focus on here. I'm also going to add a bit more atmosphere to the environment, add some fog, change some lighting, that kind of thing. So let's get going. Let's start out by adding some atmosphere to our scene. Uh, we're going to use volumetric fog and mist. Um, you could use the built-in fog, but this provides a lot more control, as you'll see once we've installed it and got going. So now that's installed, let's navigate to our scene camera, which is inside our Neo FPS folder underneath Simple Spawner. And we're going to add a component here. We'll search for fog and mist. And the one we want is volumetric fog and mist. And you can see straight away that that adds a fog effect. We're going to create a profile because we want to be able to edit this. That creates a profile in the root. So we're going to expand this out and we're just going to put this inside of our dev component, uh, our dev folder. Uh, so let's just drag that across into the dev folder. There we go. Okay, so now that we have a profile, we can start editing this. And I'm going quite quick here. In fact, I've speeded up the video a bit. You can always slow it down if you want to see what I'm doing and how I'm achieving it. But learning to use the tool through the tutorials and, and manuals is probably the best bet for you. But basically what I'm doing is I'm creating kind of a low greenish fog that just feels a bit kind of, well, sewer-like, unhealthy. Um, and I'm doing that by changing the, the colors available and the lighting that's reflecting within the fog and so on. So if you do want to follow this carefully, just slow the video down at this point and you'll be able to see what's going on. So now that we've set that up on the scene camera, we also need to add it to our player camera. So select the player object and go to the player camera, which is on the player camera spring here and add the same component, the volumetric fog and mist to this camera. Once you have that, set up the profile using the one we just developed, which we saved in the dev folder. There we go. Now if we hit play, okay, there it is. Bit of a wind effect as it kind of, the noise waves by. And some horrible green color. It's not, not ideal right now. We'll do some more work on that as time goes. But you get the idea. I could do with some more density. I could do with it being less luminescent. And maybe have it swirl around a little bit more. But we have the beginnings of some atmosphere. So the observant among you out there will have noticed that there were sound effects in that last playthrough. So we're a little bit out of order here. But the sound effects come from this classic zombie sound effects library. Uh, it's really good, recommend you pick it up, absolute bargain. So in order to use that, uh, we need to apply those sounds to our Emerald AIs. And so we'll drop back into our zombie development uh, from the last episode of this tutorial series. And within here, you can find the sounds tab and you navigate through this and you'll find injured sounds, attack sounds and so on. And you simply add as many as you need um, and drag them in and it will pick ones at random from the sets that you do so here we're setting up one of the attack sounds and you can see this pa sound pack that we've got has loads of different sound effects for you so just pick a whole load um, I'm not doing any careful design here I'm just throwing them in fast forward through setting up all of these zombies and I'll see you on the other side 
Next up in the improvement of the look and feel of this game is to add in some better weapons. You'll have noticed in the Neo FPS asset, the weapons are pretty low poly, pretty flat shaded. They're not really uh, suiting the style that we have for this game. And so I'm going to put in um, some weapons from Maxim Bogrimov. And this is going to give me the chance to show you how powerful Neo FPS is with respect to customization and optimization for the game that you want to make rather than the one that the tool is specifically made for. Because that's not what Neo FPS is about. It is a very modular system. These animated arms and weapons are going to significantly improve the look and feel of our game. So let's get on with it. Now that we've imported those models, let's create a scene for uh, integrating them into Neo FPS. So in the Neo FPS folder, we're going to go into samples and we're going to find the feature demo firing range scene. I'm going to open that up and then we're going to save that as a new scene so that we can do edits within it. So file, save as. And we're going to save it inside our sewer zombies folder in our scenes dev and we'll call it uh, weapons testing there we go all right that scene will have the standard neo player in it so delete that and then go to where we saved our prefab for the spawner and drop that in and set it to the origin point and that'll just ensure that we're working on our own spawner and our own player with these new weapons let's just check that hit play and we should see the fog. That's the most obvious indicator that we are using the correct player, which we are. Excellent. So I'm going to be moving through this very fast. So first of all, I want to show you that if you go to the Neo FPS hub and go to tutorials, this will open up your browser. And on that page are some really excellent and detailed tutorials from Yonder Noughts Games who tell you how to go through this in three separate parts. My goal in this video is just to go really quickly and show you the minimum that you need to do. I'm also going to be making a whole load of mistakes because, well, you know, we do, don't we, when we're learning. And so I'm going to show you how to debug some of the common mistakes that I make when setting up weapons. So the first thing you need to do is create an empty object and call it whatever the name of your new gun is going to be. So we'll use new gun to start with and uh, put that into a position in the scene that is not quite where your player is. You need to be able to see it. Okay, it doesn't really matter where it is. Neo FPS has an excellent modular system. So we're going to click add component and we're going to search for modular firearm and you'll get this component on here, which is going to handle most of the hard work for you. But first we're going to set up the audio source, make the output, the spatial effects on the audio mixer and turn off play on awake. We're done on the audio source. Now we're going to go to the modular firearms. You can click through to find the documentation, always helpful. So we're going to skip the documentation and we're just going to plow right on. So we're going to navigate to the weapons pack that we imported, go to prefabs and find the automatic rifle, drag that into the weapon geometry slot. And now we can click set up firearm. And that's added a whole load of tooling that we need to work with in order to set up this firearm. And you can see we've got loads of errors and things. The first thing we want to do is set up the inventory. So we're going to use the item key for the assault rifle. So we're going to replace the existing assault rifle. Next, we're going to want an icon. And this pack does come with images you can use for icons, but they're not set up as a sprite. So we're going to find the, white, the right one. Uh, so that's rifle 01. Now we're going to make a copy of that inside of our folders over here. We don't have an icon folder yet, so let's just drop it into the root for now of our sewer zombies folder. And then we'll create an icons folder. And drag the automatic rifle in there. And then select the sprite option for the texture type and hit apply. Okay, now we have our icon, so we can go back to our new gun prefab, or game object rather, and drag that icon into the display image. There we go. And everything else we're going to leave as default right now. It won't work just yet, uh, but we'll come back to that later on. Okay, so let's go and have a look at some of these errors we've got. The first thing that we have up here is it says that we don't have any sounds. We're skipping over the two animation problems. Let's just do the sounds first. 
and we can use some of the sounds that come with the Neo FPS here. We can use the dry and weapon raise sound from Neo FPS. So we're just navigating through to that. So for the raise, we'll use the draw sound. And for the dry fire, uh, I'm not sure where it is. It's not in this folder. So let's do a search. Dry. There we go. Shared dry fire. Excellent. Let's use that. Okay, good. And now we're going to go on and start working on our animations. Get rid of some of these errors up here that saying the parameters don't exist in the animation controller that we're currently using. So to do this, we're going to need to create an animation controller. So let's create a folder for our animations. And inside there, we'll create a animation controller for our assault rifle. So now we have that controller, we're going to start creating a basic setup for the weapon. So the first thing we'll need is a get state, and this is for when the player draws the weapon out. Okay, next up, we will need a idle state. Okay, and as well as idle, we'll need aim idle for when the character is aiming down the sights. So let's wire those up so we can go from get into idle and then from idle into aim idle and from there back to idle again. So we're going to need to know when we're aiming down sights. So we'll need a boolean parameter. So bool, I'll call that aim. And we'll want to say move from idle to aim when that parameter is set to true. And from aim idle to normal idle when that is false. And we're going to want those transitions to happen whenever the uh, player moves into aim. So there's no exit time on the changes from the idle to aim idle states. Next, we'll set up the shoot state. So let's create a new state. We'll call that shoot. And we're going to be able to go into the shoot state from any state. So uh, we can shoot from the hip or from uh, while we're aiming. And we're going to need a, a trigger parameter called shoot and we'll put that onto the transition into the shoot state so whenever the trigger shoot is enabled then go into the shoot state so let's add a transition from shoot into idle and then we'll create a new state called aim shoot which is for when we are aiming down sight or ads in fact, that's a better name, ADS shoot. Um, we're going to need to rename this one hip shoot just to be a little clearer. Not hippo shoot, but hip shoot. And let's make the transition from the ADS shoot to the aim idle. And here we want to ensure that we can get into the ADS shoot whenever the shoot trigger is fired. OK, so let's create a new state. And this time the state is going to be for reload. And we can get into reload again from any state. And we'll need a trigger parameter again for this. And we'll call that reload. And put that onto the transition. Whenever the trigger parameter is reload, we will go into the reload state. And from reload, we'll go into either idle or aim idle depending on the state of the aim parameter. So aim is true or false depending on whether we want to go into normal idle or aim idle. I think I'll also add a transition from any state into get. Okay, let's have a look at what we've got here. Uh, hip shoot, oh, we should have the aim set as to whether we go into hip shoot or ADS shoot. Anything else? Oh, it has exit time. <laughs> we want to be able to shoot any time during any animation. Okay, these other transitions look pretty good. So now let's start adding the animations themselves. So navigate into the uh, Marksim Bugramov asset here and you'll find all the animations you need in here. And so I'll fast forward as I just drag those into the appropriate states. So now we can go back to our gun object and start 
configuring the animator. So our anim trigger is called shoot and oh, our, our raise anim trigger we do not have. So let's add another trigger and we will call that draw. Okay, and then we need to put that onto the transition from any state into get. So fire that transition whenever draw is triggered. Okay, now we can go in and start configuring the modules on our weapon. And once again, when we're doing this, you'll see that Neo FPS is really helpful. It gives you a drop down list of all of the options you have available. For the shooter, I'm just picking the basic hit scan shooter. For the trigger, we're going to go on and just use the automatic trigger. And you can see there's different modules provided. These are all well documented inside the Neo FPS documentation. So although it's a little bit off screen, you can't quite see what I'm selecting here. You can read it where it says existing. You can see each one. And in a moment, we're going to go through and configure each of these that need some form of configuration. Again, the documentation and the tutorials I showed you earlier on are really detailed. They explain all of the settings. We're just going to go quick here in order to get something up and running. You will want to spend some time fine tuning these to get the right weapon feel for your game. But our goal here is rapid prototyping. So we come back up to the top and we can see there's a few things that we actually have to set up that we have to configure. So let's go and do that. Let's close down these ones that don't show any error on them. And here's our first one with an error. It wants to know what ammo effect to use. So we're going to use a bullet ammo effect because that's the only one that's compatible with this weapon. And we'll search for the one that comes with the asset that we're using here. Um, so we're looking for the ammo type that we want and this particular weapon takes 762 millimeter. So we're dropping that ammo type in. And there we go, that is now saying it's configured. So we'll collapse these down, just make a bit more space, keep going until we see a big red marker. There we go. And this is for the muzzle effect. To set up the muzzle effect, we're gonna to need to tell it where to instantiate the effect object. So inside your weapon, create a new game object and call it Neo Components. And then inside that, create another new object and we'll call that one Muzzle End. Okay, once we have that, we're going to have to position it at the end of the muzzle. So we'll just drag that around in the scene until it's in the right spot. That looks pretty good. So now that we have that, we can go in and find the muzzle effect. Now this uh, Maxim Bugramov pack does come with muzzle effects. So if you go into the effects folder, get the automatic rifle. And in the VFX folder, you'll find a prefabs folder. And in there, you will find the effect for the uh, scar. So drag that into our muzzle end object. Oh, we need to reset it so it's in the right place. And now that is ready to be instantiated by uh, Neo FPS. So we'll just drag that object into our component here and the little red marker disappears. So all good. We're just going to rename that to Muzzle Flash uh, just so it's easier to find. It's just my naming convention. Okay, next up we have the standard shell eject. And here we don't have anything that's specific to this weapon. So we'll set that up. Again, we need to create an empty object. We'll call it the shell eject position. And then we need to position that and the gun at the point at which the shells will eject. So it's over here on the right hand side. And let's just pull that across. When we have it in the right position, we're going to want to angle it a little bit. So it looks like a good position. So it hit E and just drag it down a bit. There you go. Good angle. That's looking quite nice now. So we have our shell, shell eject position. We can drop that into our eject component. That tells it where to eject the shell from. Next, we need to tell it what the shell is. So if we search for casing 762, we'll find a shell casing that comes with Neo FPS, and that will do the job for now. And I think, yep, that means we're now fully configured. So let's create a prefab out of that object. Uh, let's go over to our prefabs folder inside Neo FPS and create a new folder. Uh, we'll call that folder weapons. There we go. And inside here, we'll drag our new weapon in. 
Uh, first of all, let's rename it. This is Assault Rifle. Okay, good. And we'll drag that in and we now have a prefab. So we can delete that from our scene now and we need to tell our player to use it. So we go to the Sui Zomb Sua Zombie player, go down to the um, inventory section, which is here. And we're just going to replace the existing Assault Rifle with our new Assault Rifle. So that is there. And it uses the same ammo as before, so we don't need to add a new ammo object in. Let's hit play. We're not seeing it. Why is that? Let's have a look. It's probably something to do with the way the inventory is set up. Ah, that's right. Remember I said earlier on when we set the inventory up, it won't work yet. Uh, the reason is that we did not tell it which slot to go into because I couldn't remember which slot it should be. So it says here, quick slot. I believe that the correct one would have been four. As I uh, saw when I set that up at the empty space, you see where the icon is in number four. Uh, that's where it should have been. Excellent. So now we have it. Oh, we only have one bullet in each um, clip, which is not ideal. So here we'll go to our simple reloader, I think it is. And there it is. Magazine size is going to be 30 and the starting size will be 30. So let's try that. Yep, we now have 30, excellent. And the recoil and so on, I have no idea whether this is good, good recoil or accurate recoil. Uh, I'm not gonna bother setting it up here. My son is the expert in how the weapon should feel. So um, I'll have him help me with that. Now, I did notice I had no reload audio. So let's go find that uh, inside of sounds, I believe. Yep, there we go, it's a sounds folder. Assault Rifle, Reload, there we go. Let's drag that into the Reload component. Let's fire a few off. Okay, there's our Reload sounds. Okay, now when we aim down sights, something is not right here. It isn't actually aiming down sights. It's kind of zooming in a bit, but it's not playing the animation to aim down sights. Well, it took me a little while to find this one. I was looking inside of the animation controller and I saw that we did have a Boolean for controlling when we aimed down sight. Uh, so what it had to be is that we weren't actually setting that Boolean. Inside of the weapon move aimer, there is a setting for that Boolean parameter. Uh, it's right here. So just set that to aim and you're good to go. So let's look at that in the test scene. Let's aim down sights, that looks good. We're aiming down the sights properly. Let's fire a couple off. Yep, they look like they're landing in the right place. Excellent, so let's put that into the main dev scene. We shouldn't need to do anything here. It's all been done in the prefab, so we should be able to just hit play and it works. Okay, there's our weapon and it's firing nicely. Good, let's try reload. Okay. So did you notice how the animation played after the reload? Uh, the problem there must be that we have an exit time on the reload. Yeah, so that exit time means the current animation has to end before the reload animation starts. And that's why we saw that separation. Let's try that in game. Okay, let's try reload. Yep, that happened instantly. Excellent, so that's fixed that problem. And here it is in game. And it looks a lot better, I think you'll agree. It's looking quite nice at this point. And I've also done some other weapons off screen. Um, they're done in exactly the same way. Here's a pistol, for example. Um, no difference in the way you put them together. So you now have all the skills to do this. If you want to fine tune your weapons, do check out the Neo FPS documentation. It's really good, really detailed. The videos that they provide for tutorials are really spot on. So, what comes next? Here we have what we'll have at the end of the next video. So what we've done here is we've worked on the procedural generation of the level. And so each time we play, we're going to have a different level. It's going to have a different feel. As you can see here, we've changed the lighting. It's much darker. It's harder to see the enemies. We also have some obstructions, the pillars in the way. We're going to add in some ammo, uh, make the game uh, a little bit more completable. And once we've done that, we'll be there. We'll be able to publish the game. So hit subscribe, hit the like button. If you like it, hit the don't like button. If you don't, but if you do hit the don't like button, 
please let me know why so I can improve things. See you again soon. Bye-bye.